uh, those assumptions in different settings, different circuits of a amplifier. See what an inverting amplifier would do is, as the name suggests, amplify some signal and invert the signal. So the output will be negative of the input and amplify means it will magnify. So let's see how that happens in, uh, in the circuit. So the negative and this is increase. Amplitude, okay. So let's first get the op amp. I'll connect the non-inverting, which means that non-inverting input, which is the positive one to the ground. Let's take the output, connect it to a resistor, feed it back to the inverting input. Inverting means the negative. Then connect a resistor to a voltage source. So this is our input. Let's call this R. Let's call this RF. This is V out. Okay, now, why this circuit? Well, I guess you got to try different ways to wire them and see what the output would look like. So what we're interested in here is we want to understand what is the output as a function of input. Okay, so remember the input could be maybe uh, some sensor, which is going to send millivolts of voltage. And we want to now look at the output and see what that output would look like when it's wired in this fashion. Okay, so part of the deal here is to uh, analyze the circuit, you know, dr draw the currents and voltages, use KCL, KVL, and figure out what this ratio is. Once we have the ratio, we can then uh, use it to do whatever you want, like in this case, invert and amplify. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw the circuit. I'm going to assume currents, solve for the currents, and then that will give me a value for the ratio, which I'm interested in. So let's copy this. Okay, so what we'll do is we will, we can assume currents whichever way we want. Okay, let's say that this is I out, so it's close. And then let's assume this is I in. And remember we said this is I negative, I positive. I'm just gonna write that down. And I think that I'll, I'll it'd be an advantage if I can figure out the voltage here. So I'll call that point C, okay? And I'll be interested in computing the voltage at C. Okay, so as I said, our goal is to compute V out versus V in, or ratio of V out to V in, that's unknown. Okay, so the op-amp assumptions for op-amp, just two of them. There's one is V positive is V negative, and I negative equals I positive equals zero. Okay, so two other things now we can use. Okay, now what we'll do is we can write, let me write this down. V minus and V positive. Okay, so the, 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 the goal is here to somehow write V out, right? Write a formula for V out. And the way I'm thinking of doing this is, since I chose the point C, I can then try to find what is the, uh, I can try to find the potential across the resistor RF. Remember one side of the RF is 
P out. Right? Since this point, this point, this point is the same voltage because you know there is there's no resistor between them. And then C is at a different voltage. So I'll write V out minus VC equals I out RF. Right? That is the voltage drop across the resistor is going to be uh, V out minus VC, where V out is, I'm assuming, is at a greater potential than VC. That's why the voltage, the current flows from higher potential to lower potential, like in a battery. Okay, now let's me try to write a formula for V in because that's something which I want right in this formula. So V in and VC. So V in minus VC equals. So the voltage difference between those two is going to be the voltage drop across the resistor or I in Okay, so now what I'm trying to do here is, I'm trying to figure out what this ratio is, but then this is an unknown. Uh, I out is an unknown, I in is an unknown. So I better find formulas or compute this. So I'm trying to figure out how can I write a formula for I out, I in, and VC. Once I have can eliminate those things, I'll have the ratio of V out to V in. Okay, so for uh, now, let's see how I can use the assumption. So we have V plus, that right here, is connected to the ground. So it has to be that V plus is zero because V plus is connected to the ground, right? This connected to the ground. But we know that V minus is V positive which means that V negative is zero. I put this here and then I got V negative zero. But we, we can also see that VC, voltage at C is the same as the voltage of the inverting input. So VC is nothing but V negative because what's C? It's connected to the negative one. So it has to be that VC is zero. So that's helps me eliminate VC from here. It's out of the equation. Now we're left with I out and I in. Now what we can do is, you can see I out is here, I in is here. Um, maybe I should, we just, so I out goes here, it comes here, right? So I out is going in to node C. I in is also going to node C. Maybe I can use KCL here, right? At node C, we should have I in, which is going inside C. I out, which is also going inside C, should be equal to the current coming out of C, which is I negative. So this is KCL at C. But we know that I negative is zero. This is one of the assumptions. The assumption is that the input impedance is infinity, which gives me I negative zero. So what this means is I out is negative I in. Okay, with that, I think I'm ready to solve these. What I can do here is that you can take the ratio of V out to V in. A different color. And then you see that the ratio is I out divided by I in, RF divided by R, but I out divided by I in is nothing but, you can see from here, I out divided by I in is negative one. So I would take this equation. You should write this down here again. So it's negative one, P out, V in is
is R F divided by R. Okay, from these two equations, we have P out divided by V in is nothing but negative R F divided by R. Okay, so there are two things you can note from here. Number one, P out is the negative uh, of V. So this sign here means that it is inverting. The second thing is the amplification. You want the signal to be amplified. So if you make RF say equal to, I don't know, 10 or 1000 times R. So if you choose R to be one kilo ohm, you choose RF to be 10,000, oh, sorry, 1000 kilo ohms. Then you see that V out divided by V in would be negative 1000. This is the amplification. And you can achieve amplification by simply choosing the right values for the resistor. Okay, so that's why this amplifier in this configuration, the one which I showed you here, is known as a inverting amplifier. It inverts the signal, the output is negative of the input, and it amplifies. That just depends on how you choose RF and R. Okay, so that's sort of a one of the many things you can do. So I'll stop here. Our next time we'll talk about more of these functions of amplifiers, more circuits, and we analyze the circuits in similar fashion.